So we will now uh, discuss about electronic tongue. This is similar to electronic nose. By the way, the difference is only with the sample now is liquid yeah, instead of gas. So it uses also multi-sensor array to detect the characteristic responses signal of the liquid sample and process by process it by pattern recognition or expert system for learning identification. Yeah, to obtain qualitative or quantitative information. <clears throat> so the Itong research is started a bit later than he knows. It is why not yet as widely available like the electronic nose. Also, actually, yeah, there are already some big players yeah, in the electronic tong, including Pa Wat yeah, from Universitas Gadamada in Indonesia. This group has developed also an electronic tongue. <clears throat> so, for example, here the tongue, uh, the principle is basically similar like our our tongue. Yeah, this is why it's called as electronic tongue. Our tongue basically consists of it has many taste buds yeah, on the surface of our tongue, and yeah, the taste buds repress, uh, respond to different chemicals in the solution, yeah, uh, to generate different signal, which are then transferred through the nerve. Yeah, sensory nerve, sensory neurons to our brain. Okay, then the brain will do the analysis and processing of those signals to obtain the features of the signal and give the distinction between the different chemicals. Yeah, whether it is salty, sweet, sour, uh, what else? <clears throat> uh, umami. Yeah, this, uh, for example, yeah, bitter. And each taste bud, taste bud has different selectivity. Yeah, some selective to salt, other sour, other sweet, a different receptor in our tongue and located also in different places. So <clears throat> they are the, this receptor are located within the bilayer lipid membrane of the surface of the tongue. And then they will generate signal, which is then transferred to through the nerve to the brain. Okay. <laughs> so basically the design similar to our tongue, and that is why it's called electronic tongue. The difference is in the component, of course. We do not uh, we use our, uh, artificial sensor and then made from membrane or of lipid polymer, and it is realized by using multi sensor, multi component analysis, similar like in traditional analytical chemistry. So, if you have an array of M sensors that is trying to detect N components within the solution within the, the sample solution, then the response of each of the sensor can be described like this as an array, B1 equals to A1, C multiplied by C1, etc. until PM equals to AM1 up to AM and CM. So P here is the response of the signal, <coughs> the signal of the sensor I, P1, P2, and PM, while C1 is the component inside the uh, solution, the, inside the analyte solution, C1 and then Cn, the different component within the uh, solution sample. And the connection between them is represented by the A, yeah, yeah A, I, J. So when, for example, P2 is very selective only towards C2, then only A2, 2 has the value. The other A's within that row will be zero. It is, uh, in reality, this is unlikely. Usually, they still have some uh, other values, if, uh, even though maybe very small. Okay. All of the M sensors are specific, which means that a sensor only responds to one component. The constant A, I, J, which are the ratio of the signal of sensor I to the concentration of component A, are already known. As long as this M is larger than or equal to n, then these equations can be solved yeah, from linear matrix uh, algebra. <clears throat> uh, the difference, however, that this is used for traditional multi-sensor, multi-component analysis. However, in Itong, usually it has cross-sensitivity yeah, between, uh, it is not just this uh, C2A22 may affect the response in PM. Uh, that it does not only affect E2, it has also effect to the PM. That is what we call as cross sensitivity. 
that is why we have we cannot use normal uh, linear algebra analysis like this. We have to use artificial neural network, for example, to have uh, because it is non-linear, yeah, non-linear pattern recognition. <clears throat> so the structure itself then similar to electronic nodes can be divided into three main parts. Uh, the cross-sensitive uh, sensor array, the sensor array itself, the self-learning transport system, and the smart pattern recognition system. So this is equivalent to the tom, the memory of our brain and the brain calculation of the organism. The uh, characteristics of ETOM, one is the detection of object is a liquid sample. The signal obtained is the overall response to a solution rather than the response of a specific component in the solution. The attributes of different samples are able to, dis to be distinguished through processing the original signal collected from the sensor array. The sample attributes derived by ETHOM are different from the concept of taste of organism. Yeah. And to as the sensory matrix itself, the element of the sensory array, usually for the ETOM, researchers use this functional membrane. For example, uh, in Kyushu University, they built their sensor array using PVC membrane, polyvinyl covin membrane that you learn from my material. So this one is shown in figure 4.55. Here, PVC membrane sensor array. Inside it has the electrode, sensor sensor for an electrode, and covered by this one. Yeah. This is from cross section, and it contains <coughs> an analyte in the in between the and and and, and, and the membrane. The membrane will, cut, will, will pass through only certain ions and will be detected by the, the potential will be detected by the electrode. So it measured the open circuit potential with the silver silver chloride reference electrode. The intensity of the affinity between these substances and the PVC membrane modified in a variety of active material. So the PVC membrane is then modified by an active material. So not only PVC, but different liquid, uh, different uh, lipid, for example. So the system is generally composed of several electrodes providing a response to different test substances. And the data was relatively limited. The test result affected by radar charge were directly corresponding to the characteristic of the test substances. <laughs> Calcogenide class membrane. So it's a kind of solid state ion selective record, ISE, which we have learned in the previous session. So they are usually detected, they used to detect heavy metal ions, but then it is now used a different composition, uh, not to make to develop. Yeah, this one, resin and plasoy, use them to detect uh, develop non-specific sensor using different type of carcinogenic carcinogenic glass, like uh, germanium sulfide, uh, germanium sulf uh, disulfide, uh, silver sulfide, etc. Okay. And they will have as a result different high sensitivity and selectivity. It will then uh, be used to develop sensor array to detect heavy metal ions and hydrogen plus. This is how it looks like. Yeah, uh, this is the detection chamber. This is the base, base plate, and this is the calcogenide class sensitive membrane. Then, <clears throat> lung multiplet membrane. So, this is based on lipid membrane. Made using Langmuir project. <clears throat> so they modified the platinum electric surface with, with, with 10 nanometer thick membrane, Langmuir project membrane consisting of stearic acid, polyaniline, and polypyrrole. It was easy to detect the signal of the interaction between the sensors and the taste substances such as sour, sweet, bitter, and salty by using electrochemical impedance spectroscopy. 
So this is also what your senior now is trying to develop. Elga, yeah, using using electrochemical impedance spectroscopy. Although she is not using uh, slag membrane membrane, she is using spin coated polymer membrane. So the results show that the e tong system was very sensitive to the taste substances and able to distinguish mineral water, beverages, wine, coffee, etc. Okay. So this is the advantages of electronic tong. Sometimes in sensor application, you don't really want to know the exact chemical substances that make up the solution that you are interested in. Yeah, you just want to classify them. Are they good coffee or bad coffee, for example? Are they Robusta coffee or Arabica coffee, for example? Is that, is that water, for example, normal water or mineral water? Or maybe other type of water? Maybe beverages or wine? What kind of wine? How old is the wine, etc. So if you use the exact chemistry analysis, you would use the liquid chromatography, HPLC. Which is obvious, of course, it can show the chemical content of these beverages. Yeah, it's very specific and quantitative, but it will take it will be tedious measurement, costly, requiring special setup, special also uh, uh, technician. But by using electronic tongue, then you can use them to uh, detect. <coughs> Uh, these beverages and classify them without having to know specifically what makes them. Okay, so this is similar with uh, genos. Yeah, they they just sample healthy people and people who has COVID nineteen diagnostic, of course, uh, verified with positive PCR result. Then the genos will determine the difference of the response between the two class. They do not really need to know exactly what kind of gas compounds or trotic organic compounds inside the healthy person and the uh, ill person. Okay. They just need to classify. So this is advantages, but also this is the point where many biochemists or doctors fail to understand and then they they are objecting this kind of approach for diagnostic because uh, it seems like there is no science behind it but the, the idea is to diagnose and you do not using the, the kind of black box like ray pattern recognition you do not really know need you do not really need to know what substances are there that makes up a person to be covid-19 like uh, positive because it doesn't measure the viral load content directly, like PCR or antigen, but instead it measures the metabolic gases composition change due to the infection. Okay, and this is how it looks like. So there is a platinum electrode, yeah, modified by, by a membrane, different membrane, as mentioned here, stearic acid, polyaniline, polypyrrole, etc. And then put electrolyte in it. If the liquid is put, uh, this is there's a counter electrode, uh, reference electrode here, and the working electrode is platinum. The sample is put inside here. So <clears throat> then another type of electronic tongue is this bionic test chip made from Austin University in Texas. This is made from microsphere. <coughs> Containing uh, inside a microfluidic channel, it becomes still inside a silicon substrate. Then it is based on light analysis. When uh, the researcher develops algorithm signal, so here what is changed is the light is being modulated. Modulated lights emitted by the blue light emitting diodes went through the ball and the bottom of the platform, platform and were absorbed by the CCD detector. The taste chip could preliminarily determine the concentration of hydrogen, calcium, and cerium, and sugar in the solution. Then they developed the algorithm of signal recognition to achieve multi-ion 
identification automatically. So this is shown in figure 4.59. The image of the absorbed light by the CCD, yeah, it's being captured by microscope and the CCD and then captured by the image capture card. So this is using optical recognition rather than electronic recognition. From there, then you can classify the ions inside the liquid, this this pump. This is combined with a microfluidic sampling. Okay. Okay. So that will be all for electronic tongue. Is there any questions related to electronic tongue and electronic nose? No questions, Chris, Ezra, Andy, Angeli.